Hello and welcome to worship with Mount Hope Lutheran Church in West Dallas. We're blessed that you could be with us in this time of worshiping together. Welcome to any who are viewing our services online for the first time. We're glad that you can join us. And we hope that everyone out there is having a safe and blessed 4th of July. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is endure everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess, we confess that, that we do not trust your abundance, your abundance and, and we, we deny your, your presence in our lives. lives. We, we place, place our hope in ourselves, ourselves and rely on our own efforts. efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that, so that we, we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus, Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope. For hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. You are, you are great, great, O God, God and, and greatly, greatly to be praised. praised. You, you have, have made us for yourself, and, and our, our hearts, hearts are restless, restless 
until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today we're going to watch a video. Um, it's a song that many of you are familiar with. It is well with my soul. And um, there's a Bible verse, or part of the Bible reading today from the Gospel that is probably a familiar verse to you as well. It says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Um, this verse struck me particularly this week because uh, my dad is entering the last days of his life. And there's been a lot of... Um, a lot of, of course, family coming together and a lot of um, worry and sorrow and joy, um, lots of emotions in this time. And I know that all of you have been experiencing very similar things during this time. It's so much harder because of COVID, isn't it? We still are um, going through a lot of the same trials and tribulations of life, but with that added dimension where we have to be so careful not to make each other ill. This song um, is such a beautiful song, and I had not known a lot of the history about it. It was written by um, a man named, whose last name was Spafford. Uh, he lived in the 1800s. He was an American lawyer and a real estate investor and church elder. And in 1873, he and his wife, Anna, and their four daughters had planned to visit Europe as a family, but business kept Horatio behind. And on the voyage, Anna and their four daughters were traveling to, uh, the, that they were traveling on, struck another vessel and sank rapidly, and only Anna survived. All four daughters uh, were drowned. Anna sent a hauntingly brief telegram to Horatio, bearing the words, saved alone. So on this voyage to meet Anna as his ship neared the place where his daughters had drowned, he was inspired to write the lyrics for this hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Unlike many heartbreak songs, it focuses less on what was lost and more on where hope can be found. No doubt Spafford was shattered by the loss of his daughters, but his heart turned to the faithfulness of God in the midst of loss and the work of Jesus to rescue sinners. This hymn does not diminish or gloss over pain and tragedy, but rather proclaims that God is present in them and greater than them. Let us carry that thought with us um, as we go through this difficult time and as we listen to the words of this song. Oh 
The first reading today is from the seventh book of Romans, the 15th chapter. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, Evil lies close at hand, for I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and I will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, it sounds like our text from today has Jesus in a bit of a snit, I think. He's tired of people not being satisfied. Neither John nor Jesus are the people's cup of tea. Neither Jesus' joy and redemption attitude nor John's fire and brimstone calls to repent seem to motivate the people. What were they waiting for? Think about all those kids you've known who can't respond with a positive positive response to any suggestion of what game to play or what activity to engage with the result that they end up playing or doing nothing. Those in Jesus' day preferred to sit on the sidelines uninvolved rather than take seriously either John's or Jesus' words, God's end-time messengers. And isn't that the case? When we occupy our whole time and selves debating over the how or the what, we end up with the nothing. And sitting on the sidelines isn't a symptom of only Jesus' day. Even in spite of so many who are out protesting the streets, we still have many in our community, our society, our country that are sitting on the sidelines. Unhappy that things aren't happening or unhappy that they aren't going their way, 
unhappy that things aren't changing, aren't bringing fulfillment, but would still rather stay uninvolved. And that goes the same for churches, too. Many people today are seeking a connection to God, self-identifying as spiritual but not religious. It's as if they're clicking through all kinds of options, but not finding one that they can hit join or accept. In today's text, we only hear the beginning of Jesus' preaching. The lectionary or planning or selection committee chose to leave out four verses. And if we read them, we can guess why. Matthew 20 and following. Then Jesus began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the, the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. All of these places, all the people in these places had seen Jesus' power, had experienced his healing, had been blessed and graced, and yet they didn't change their ways. They lacked motivation. They were complacent in their faith and in their lives. Hearing grace, bring it on. But you can just forget about that woe stuff, Jesus. Unfortunately, we are often like the Apostle Paul. We get stuck in doing the things we hate and not able to do the things that we know that we should. We don't like hearing that we are dug in and dug in deep. We don't like to think that we will have to pay for our consequences, especially since God is, in, uh, is such a good and gracious God. And I believe that. I believe that with all my heart, that that is true. But that doesn't leave us an excuse to not try to turn our lives, our churches, our communities, even our country around. This is Fourth of July weekend. We celebrate our nation's independence, our freedom, and all the liberties that come with it. Normally we have parades and deck ourselves, our vehicles, our homes, our yards with red, white, and blue. Everyone is patriotic on Fourth of July. Well, maybe some of those things are going on for some folks. Most of it's a little bit different this year. I wonder if that isn't appropriate somehow. Because as wonderful as the freedoms are and the opportunities we have are in this country, I have somewhat disconcerting, some folks might even say cynical, attitude towards such patriotism most days, but especially in light of what's going on in our world. No, patriotism is not bad in itself. My father and uncle, my brother-in-law and my brother, my husband's grad, or my brother-in-law and his brother, my husband. Greg's dad, like many of your family or friends or you personally, were in the service of this country. And I have great thanks for all who have given their time and even their very lives in serving for this country in peacetime or wartime, at home or abroad, from this country's beginnings to this very day. And yes, I appreciate every freedom that we have gained because of it. But sometimes I feel as if people miss the whole point. Sometimes our patriotism, or perhaps termed better, pseudo-patriotism, gets in the way of seeing us for who we really are. We are blessed and fortunate, but not perfect. We are great in so many ways, but fall short as a nation and so many others. Yes, we have fertile, tillable land, but it ends up polluted and misused. Yes, we have great food sources and huge supermarkets, but we still have people going hungry, the greatest majority of them children. Yes, we have leisure activities of all kinds of stuff to keep us busy and make life easier and more enjoyable, but at the cost of folks working long hours or more than one job to pay for them 
taking them away from family, even on holidays, having jobs ripped from them during this pandemic. Yes, women can work, but still are not paid as much as many in a great number of instances. Yes, we have equal opportunity laws, but they are often skirted or employers find loopholes when it comes to race or gender bias. Our nation's Declaration of Independence declares that all men are created equal, yet inequality and inequity still abound. I think that as a nation we have become self-centered and complacent. We think that we are the country in the world rather than a country, one of so many others on this planet called Earth, the place that God created, the world that God loves, whole hosts of tribes and peoples that were here before us. It is one of the reasons why I have mixed feelings about singing God Bless America because it often comes off with the tone of God bless us first because we are better than everyone else, or God bless us to the exclusion of others. And you might say, yeah, that's, but that's all those other people in the ballpark who really don't understand. One of my seminary classmates shared online that she was driving home from church uh, um, and had to turn around and go back and reread a sign. It said, God blessed America because America blessed God. I'm not so sure how we have done that. In fact, that we couldn't at many times in our nation's history, perhaps now, have list, been listed along with Chorazin and Bethsaida in Jesus' woes. Yes, we, this country is a great place, and I am blessed to live here, and I am blessed every time I come home from another country that I visited. But again, it's not by any means perfect, and I don't believe that we have blessed God in every way we are not liked everywhere in the world. We are not as progressive as we like to think in all areas of science, medicine, and environmental protection. We do not have the longest life expectancy in the world. Where do you think we rank? Anywhere from 38th in 2015 to 54th in 2017, depending on the agency reporting. Still, we're not at the top. We have an ever-widening and deepening chasm between the haves and the have-nots. We rally our support, and our U.S. is the greatest behind Olympic teams. But how do we rally to support those who are lost and least, those who are hungry and homeless, those who are jobless or dealing with mental illness that lands them in prison, those who are treated unjustly based on their gender identity or the color of their skin? So what's the solution? We need to change and do better. In doing so, there aren't always easy answers and there is often a lot of hard work in store. There are ideals that seem unattainable, tasks that seem insurmountable, but that should not leave us, as those children talked about who were not motivated to play the game, those who sit on the sidelines with nothing being done. We need to quit saying what we don't want to do, what we think we can't do, and instead get up off the sidelines and get into the game. Jesus says, first repent of your old ways and then truly link yourself to him. Trust in Jesus' way, yoke to his way. Get excited and motivated about his word. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And isn't that what Donna said before the video? We are all weary. We are all carrying heavy burdens, but we can rest in Christ, taking his yoke upon us, learning from him. For he is gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. It is Christ in us, as Paul said, that allows us and motivates us and strengthens us to do what is right, to do what needs to be done. Jesus uses the metaphor of the yoke to emphasize our connectedness to others who have taken on his yoke. Many hands, many minds and hearts in the right place make light work together. We pull together and no one has to do it alone. And many, many great things can and will be accomplished. 
Jesus gave us freedom from sin, not so that our lives would be the same, but that they would be changed and would bring about a new kingdom. Not the kingdom of the USA or Great Britain or Brazil, but God's kingdom. God's kingdom where there will be justice for all. People who God created equal will be equal. And we will be blessed, not just as America, but as the whole of humanity, the world that God so loved. Amen. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word, even though we are so separated from one another physically during this time. Embrace us as we struggle to find common ground with those of other faiths and beliefs and with each other. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from apathy so that we continue to do your ministry in this community, even when our building is not open. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from disinterest in the care of your creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. We pray for the United States as we celebrate our nationhood. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Heal this country from the divisiveness of political rhetoric, racial inequity, and economic hardship. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. This nation continues to struggle with COVID-19. We cry out to you to guide us as we struggle as a nation and as individuals with our response to this pandemic. 
Heal those who are sick. Guide the medical professionals and researchers who are racing to create a vaccine. Give us the compassion to wear masks and practice social distancing to protect those around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We give thanks to those who have died in faith, especially Irene Brandes and Eva Stramowski. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. you. Again, we take this time to give you great thanks for all the ways that you are continuing to support Mount Hope Lutheran Church through your prayers, through your notes of encouragement, and of course through your financial donations. Um, those can be made online or you can sign up for electronic giving um, or you can mail them in. And so if you go to the Mount Hope uh, website, there are options and instructions there. Um, our our Hope Pantry and Closet volunteers are busy working on getting things put away and organized. Um, and so continue to keep them in your prayers. And we, we are grateful for all the ways that you support those ministries here. Let us pray. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song, the one who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Amen.
time for some announcements. Just as always, a reminder that you can join us on Sunday mornings at 10.30 for a Zoom coffee hour. It's really fun to get together. Um, we even have some youngsters that are on there from time to time. Um, we had Quinn telling jokes on oh, Sunday. Nice. So. <laughs> So it's always good to, to join us. You'll ne you never know, we'll be there. And so it's, it's a great time. And also uh, we do Zoom Bible study on Thursdays at one o'clock and invite you to do that too. If you need information, more information on that, um, you can email me. My information is on the uh, church's website. And Donna, you have the announcement. Yes, we're going to have a week from this weekend, let's see. So it will be July 11th on Saturday from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. We're collecting personal hygiene items for the Hope Closet. Um, so things like shampoo, toothpaste, and um, deodorant are the biggies. Um, anything else is welcome, lotions or things like that, razors, um, but those are the biggies. And so we'll be in the parking lot from 10 to 11. You can do it easily. We'll all be wearing our masks, so we'll be socially distanced, and we would greatly appreciate any donations you can bring. Thank you. That'd be great. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. I hope you're having a great weekend. I just wanted to um, inform you that the governance team has decided that we need to meet on July 19th at 10.30. It's going to be a Zoom congregational meeting and we really want you all to attend. Uh, you can attend via Zoom or you'll be able to call in. The information will be in the letter that you will be receiving shortly. So I hope to see you all there. We want to give you an update in terms of how we're doing as a congregation on the finances as well as voting on changing the name of the congregation from Mount Hope English Evangelical Lutheran Congregation to Mount Hope Lutheran Church, as we've all been known by, known it by. So um, we hope that you all will be there. More details are in that letter, and looking forward to seeing all your faces on the Zoom meeting. Thanks so much. Bye. Now go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a good 4th of July, everyone. Be safe. Bye.